lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike Podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. How are you tonight? Pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. We're getting kind of a late start here. Yeah, my bad. I had to get a haircut. That's okay. I had to pick up uh, dinner for my mom, so. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. And then I had time to make dinner for myself when I got home. Oh, hey. So you're you're dinnered up then. I'm I'm dinnered up. Because, you know, I'm trying to, like, eat earlier. Oh, that's right. We had talked about that. Okay. Yeah, my doctor suggested, like, so. you know, maybe you shouldn't be eating at 8 o'clock at night. <laughs> I'm glad my doctor didn't suggest that because I eat way later than that sometimes. Yeah, well, your schedule's way different, though, too. It is. Um, And, yeah, I don't know. I, there's no there's no reason for me to be eating at 8 o'clock at night. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm. That's just laziness. It's not like... Other than your podcast partners running late. Well, there's that. But that only happens one day a week. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. The rest of the time, it's just me like coming home and not wanting to do anything. Yeah. Uh, I sympathize with that. And I used to um, really regularly uh, go to um, the grocery store after work and buy food to cook for that night. Yeah. Like I used to eat a lot more fresh food than I do now. And yeah. so I got I to gotta get back to that. Anyway, no, that's, that's yeah. I'm getting right. old, man. It's it's got, got to take care of that old body. Yeah, it's hard to maintain this figure. <laughs> it is. Um, it's funny how that works. Yeah. Age. <laughs> <laughs> There's people out there that don't know me and are thinking, man, I wonder if he's like a big fat guy. <laughs> he's not. <laughs> <laughs> um. Mm-hmm. So uh, anyway, that that you know, but I got a couple extra pounds and that I can't seem to shake. Yeah. I'm like, I got like five or so pounds that I used to be able to get rid of pretty quickly. Yeah, but and I, I can't anymore. <laughs> but that's but it's that time of year, man. It's winter weight. No, it's it's, it's forget that, man. It <laughs> it's getting cool tonight at 52 degrees. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I no, got to cover my pipes. I don't need to, <laughs> uh, I yeah, I don't need a whole lot of insulation here. Yeah. I don't know. And I mean, we're coming through past the holidays. I mean, it is that time of year. Yeah, it's the eating time of year. Yeah. A bunch of junk food. Yeah. You know, uh, what's funny is like, so years ago, I actually like was getting really out of shape. I say really out of shape. I never really looked that heavy, but. Yeah, but um, you, you were definitely, you were heading down a not good path. Yeah, yeah. It was like eight or 10 years ago, I guess. Yeah. And, um. And I changed the, the first thing I changed was diet. And of course, I like I grew up an athlete. Like I played a bunch of sports, and like even when I was beyond all that, um, I was still like playing basketball with friends and going around. Like we yeah. we used to go out well, drinking, to... and then we'd go like kick the <laughs> soccer ball around or go play tennis or yeah, you know some game that we had or, invented. Yeah. Um, Man, those were the days. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, well, now we we used to get it earlier. Start again, it's though. True. I think like we were going out at like five thirty six, and then we had the whole night afterwards. Yeah. Um. Now we're going out at six thirty seven, and yeah, we're old. <laughs> and we, we, we don't really have a crew that's interested in going and doing sports at eight or nine o'clock at night <laughs> after drinking a couple of pitchers of margaritas. Exactly. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. What happened to those people? Yeah, we got we got to get that. Going. Our friends got boring. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> um. So, but then yeah, somewhere along the way, it. I realized that uh, I couldn't, I guess when I was in my mid thirties or so, um, I couldn't uh, stay in shape just sitting on the couch anymore. Yeah. And uh, so the first thing I did was, though was change my diet and I was never much of a sweets person. Um, so you, you know, tried I, to cut them out. I, well, I didn't have any trouble cutting them out. It's yeah. when I like slacked off later Yeah. Um, on the diet. Once, once I'd achieved what I wanted and I could eat like more normally and not be as strict with myself about it. Yeah. Um, now it's like it's hard to give up sweets. Like yeah. I have, I have uh, those dark chocolate salted caramel Rolos in the <laughs> uh, yeah in the um thing in the kitchen right now, and which I walked past in Dollar General yesterday, yeah. and I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I know I shouldn't buy these, but I'm going to. Yeah, and I, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> I did. It worked. I put them right up there at the front of the store. I have to wait. That, hmm. that is the trick. Yeah. So um. But then, yeah, then I started getting exercise too. But now, like, I'm still doing both of those things, and it's it, it's just not as it's doesn't just work not as the easy. same way. Yeah, so I got to do more, yeah, more, and it, and and you know, then I'm I'm having like permanent injuries <laughs> to my shoulder. <laughs> so, like, a lot of the things that I want to do, I can't do without doing more damage. Yeah. And uh, that's not productive. Yeah. So then you're like substituting in different exercises. I don't know. It's 
Getting old sucks, man. Yeah, that indeed it does. That was a lot of words to say very well. <laughs> yep. To, to agree. That was, a, that was a lot of words to agree. Yes, um, indeed, you're right. <clears throat> all right, then. Well, let's let's do the real thing. Uh, we didn't talk about whiskey the whole time this time, Jeff, so you, you didn't have to skip it. <laughs> hey, there you go. Um, yeah, I guess we just want to start with the with the um, ATF stuff. The ATF. Yeah, so um, I guess they came out and decided they're going to redefine some weapon accessories again, mm-hmm. um, which we know we kind of know how this ends. We've already seen this story play out once with the bump stock ban, um, although I think Trump had a little more involvement with that one. But it got struck down, and this this will be the same. So it's the it's the pistol braces that are being being targeted in this one, mm-hmm. um, and more or less what what happens with these is so you basically just have to register them. They just want to know you have it. Yeah, there. Well, I mean, there's more to it than that, though, right? Like, so first off, um, they're legislating through uh, through definitions. Yeah, well, because um, well, this hasn't even been legislated. No, not at all. Yeah. It's just the ATF it's, re redefining um, existing. Yeah, and this material. is an accessory. I mean, this isn't something that's. At least as far as I know, they're not serialized or anything like that. Like there's mm-hmm. at least yet. Yeah, I mean that and you know, I didn't look, but that may even be part of this. I don't think so though. I thought that you just had to register them so they would know where they were at. Yeah. And I would suspect that most people that bought handguns with these um these arm braces uh bought them with the arm brace. Like yeah. the, it was already a part of the, the pistol yeah. when they purchased it. It, sometimes that's the case, but you can also you can buy them separately. Though, yeah. And, well, of course, but yeah. um, I suspect that most people bought them as like a package. Yeah. yeah. And therefore assumed that it was legal, which it was. Well, it was yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's still legal <laughs> now. Right? Now I know. I'm, I'm yeah. <laughs> making a point though. Yeah. Um, that they just took a, an existing product, redefined it, um, and which completely changes its legality. You had a. a you had an accessory that was legal yesterday. It's yeah. illegal today. And, um, and they're, they're doing this from the agency level. Like there was no legislation to do this. Yeah. Uh, which, I mean, I have all kinds of problems <laughs> with this anyway, but that's a big one is the fact <laughs> that these a- agencies and the ATF isn't the only one. The EPA does this. They all yeah. do this where they basically just legislate. Mm-hmm. Like they make up the rules and, these people aren't elected. Like they're not, I mean, they're not Congress. Yeah. They're not really accountable to anybody but Congress. But this is, you know, this is of course a complaint that we have about um, our existing federal system anyway, is that uh, these groups are um, abdicating their authority to legislate. They're like passing it off to somebody else. And of course the reason for that is so that when they go home, if something changed that was, Unpopular. unpopular yeah. uh, they can say, "Well, I didn't do that." It's those um, those you know crazy bureaucrats at the ATF that made this happen, and I don't have any control over that, which is a lie. Yeah. Um, that you know those agencies. Well, those are executive I mean, agencies, but uh, they could have their funds cut off by Congress. Oh, absolutely. Um, or be hauled into account for things. Right. I mean, that's always an option, too. I mean, not that it gets that far, but it's something. Yeah, I mean, it's not like they're, they're, uh, they, they, they never do any uh, interrogations in Congress, yeah, right? Like, right, yeah. it's, it's not like we're, we're not looking into things. They're not trying, you know, old presidents and things like that. Anyway, um, so, yeah, they're just uh, redefining the material. It was legal uh, yesterday. It'll be illegal tomorrow. Not tomorrow, literally, but... Um, and, uh, the way they've done it is that, so they've defined it so that now if you have a pistol with one of these braces on it, it becomes a short barrel rifle, which makes it technically an assault rifle, right? Is that, that's my understanding at least. Yeah. Okay. And in order to have, uh, an assault rifle, you have to register it and you have to pay a tax on it. Yeah. Oh, that's right. The tax stamp. Yeah. 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 Now, um, this is, I think where the tricky part comes in. Um, tricky, tricky ATF, yeah. uh, where they've said that, um, you know, once this takes effect, that, uh, people have 120 days to register their firearms. Um, and if they register within that 120 days, uh, then the tax will be waived. 
Yeah. Now, I don't think they have the authority for that either. Right. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think that, the, that any of these agencies can determine whether a tax is owed or not. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess except the IRS, but... Well, I mean, that, yeah, the IRS should be the... Well, I don't... I'll be truthful with you, I just don't know. I mean, yeah. the EPA kind of does the same type thing, though, right? I'm not sure. I, I can't think of either. a specific example. I can't think of an example, but it seems to me like when they're enforcing their legislation that mm. taxes usually play into that. Yeah, but I don't think that they can waive taxes, right? They can't I, say, well, if well, you can, do... If they we institute ask, we can... them, can they not waive them? Because, I mean, that's basically mm. what the, the ATF is doing here is they're instituting a tax and then choosing to waive it for well, a period of time. Well, it's a tax that was already in place for... Yeah. For, um, a, for a for a we- class for of firearms, class of weapon, yeah, yeah, they, they're moving one weapon into this class. Well, I don't know. It just it, it brings <laughs> up the question though of whether these agencies can has any taxation authority. I don't think that they do. Uh, I mean, I don't know one way or the other. Um, um, if they don't have the authority to tax, then they shouldn't have the authority to waive tax. Yeah, I think that that should be placed in Congress, but but at any rate, that's not really what the play is here. I don't think. Yeah, the the trick is that all these people that are out there that suddenly own an illegal firearm or uh, what will be an illegal firearm yeah, if they don't pay the registered tax. And, yeah. yeah, taxed um, because they want to be compliant. Will go register their firearms. Yeah. Now, almost certainly, this. Uh, Will be struck down. This I mean, redefinition. Yeah, yeah. Will I be mean, struck it'll, down. In it'll court. Go, it'll go to court. It'll take it a year or so, or mm-hmm. a couple or a few years. I mean, you don't really know because of yeah. the, how these things play out. Mm-hmm. But it will go to court, and given the makeup of the current Supreme Court, will be struck down. Mm-hmm. So the, all these people that go out there and it and may pay, not even make it that far. It'd probably be struck down at the federal level before the Supreme Court. That's very possible. Um. But it, because, it, it, because it's clearly, mm-hmm. I mean, it's a violation. I mean, it's, yeah. and I think the ATF knows that. I mean, oh, I, I'm sure that they do. Yeah. I mean, they know this isn't going to stick, mm-hmm. but I think what you were alluding to, the play here is, is to, they're not going to throw away the documents once you register these guns. Yeah. Once it gets struck down, all those people that registered their firearms, they're not going to throw those records away. Yeah. They'll still have them. Yeah. So. And I, I think I think you're right. I think that's what the play is here. Mm-hmm. I think this is nothing but a ploy to just get more locate. people to put their firearms on record. Yep, exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. And why is that a problem? Well, because then they know then they know whose door to knock on when the next shoe drops. Yeah, <laughs> when they want to come start confiscating them. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean it's um, I don't know. I thought it was crazy reading into it. Um, well, and the other thing I was going to say about it is, um, so I, I kind of feel for the people who, and as far as I know, I don't own any guns that have this equipment on them, mm-hmm. but I kind of feel for the people who do because you're kind of in between a rock and a hard place. Yeah. Because if you don't go register this gun and you get caught with it, yeah. like that's not like a silly little slap on the wrist thing. Yeah, it's like, a felony. That's a felony and mm-hmm. you're in serious trouble. Felony gun charges. Yeah, felony gun charges is not where you want to be, yeah. especially if you're a gun enthusiast. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, best case scenario, you don't serve any jail time, but you're not allowed to own guns anymore. Yeah. Like, I mean, so so these people are really kind of hung here because, I mean, do you do you go register it or mm-hmm. do you take your chances and wait for them to, you know, overthrow this thing? Yeah. So it's 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 a bad predicament for for people who enjoy that hobby. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you and you just made a whole bunch of people that uh, a whole bunch of law abiding citizens criminals. Yeah, like overnight. Yeah, for no reason. Like I mean, these pe- these aren't mm-hmm. the people you're concerned about. Like yeah. this <laughs> this this legend, and I get that because there is a lot of fear with mass shootings and things like that, and I get that. But at this at the same time, the people that this targets isn't those people like you're not you're not solving a problem here well none of this um gun legislation or however you want to define this um ever does it yeah. you know the people that are going to comply are not the people that you're worried about ever exactly um and of course like the grand goal i guess is to eliminate legal firearms in the u.s so then everybody who owns a firearm is a criminal yeah yeah and um, we've seen where that leads, by the way. History tells a story about um, countries that go down that path. Yes. Um, I mean, it's it's 
pretty clear. Mm-hmm. It's not not something we want to do. Yeah, um, it it certainly opens the door for a more authoritarian government. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the people can't really fight back. Yeah. Um, and uh, I mean, I, I'm not sure how much else there is to say about this that we haven't said before. It, um, the the couple of problems that there are with this are, um, it's um legislation through redefinition there's no real legislation it's it's not a legislative body that's making this change yeah um it's not elected representatives it's a an entr- entrenched bureaucracy of unelected agents of an executive agency yeah. um of course the executive branch isn't a legislative agency either um <laughs> it, it's an enforcement agency so them getting to redefine the terms of what they're enforcing seems like a real problem <laughs> conflict the interest there yeah um and then of course the uh taking advantage of the um the time it takes for um these kinds of uh, measures to be struck down in court to um sucker a bunch of people into notifying the agency so that they can keep a central database of where all these firearms are yeah and i tell you that's something i really have a problem with 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 any time agencies or or even Congress does something where they know it's unconstitutional. And then when it gets struck down, it's like, okay, well we won't do that again. Mm -hmm. Like that's crap. There should be some kind of repercussions. If you're pushing through legislation that you know is unconstitutional, like there should be some kind of mechanism there to, to, to incentivize them not to do that. Well, the, I, I think the thing to do is to, is that as soon as it's challenged, the rule is suspended until it's resolved. Yeah, that would be fair. Um, because, of course, day one of this thing, it's going to be challenged. Yeah, yeah. And if that was the case, if if it was um, like struck down until a decision was made, mm-hmm. that would kind of remedy this problem. Yeah. Um, and then if it's found to be constitutional and they can do that, then, oh, well, I guess... Then we lost this battle. Yeah. You know. Um, but if, if it's not, then nobody's worse off. Yeah, you don't have uh, all of these people, like, in this bad situation with what do I do with this firearm, you mm-hmm. know? So. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we solved that one. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> I mean, that's, that was that's, easy. I mean, Solving but, all the world's problems. Yeah, but that is the solution. You're right. Like, that mm-hmm. that would be a remedy, and that would keep these agencies from overstepping their bounds as often. Yeah, well, it if would, they were held accountable help, by, you know. the, by the elected um, that would help a lot too. That would do it as <laughs> yeah. well. Um, but they, they never are. No. Um, that just doesn't, government doesn't, government can't be trusted to investigate itself. Yeah. I, I think we've proven that over and over, over and too. over again. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of, so it turns out that, uh, president Biden has had some secret documents away from the white house. <laughs> Hey man, the the garage was locked, Jack. Yeah, I see. <laughs> now I I thought that this whole saga would have um, have garnered more respect from you for uh, for Biden because it, he did have a um, a Corvette. He do, he does. Have, so I didn't know he owned the Corvette until this came up. Yeah. Um, he has a very nice Corvette. Like I I mean, what can I say? And it like it's hard for me to respect that man just because of who he is mm-hmm. but i look at him a little different now i bet you do <laughs> like i really do like it, it it's a, it's interesting how liberty that works. larry's a bit of a corvette fan a little bit so yeah, yeah. um that's a very popular the, old man car uh, uh, well I guess, I, that's not what i was gonna say but i was gonna <laughs> well it a, is that's a that's a very popular car amongst car enthusiasts just corvettes generally yeah well, so. they're 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 interesting vehicles mm-hmm. i love mine yeah. So. When it runs. When it runs, which it does <laughs> currently, by the way. Oh, so. great. great. <laughs> um, well, that's, a, that's a back and forth relationship. But. So uh, I, I guess there's been several collections of documents found in various places at this point. Yeah, which is really kind of embarrassing for him because for for everything with Trump, I mean, at least I got the feeling – that Trump knew where all of his documents were at. They're just kind of finding these things all over the place. And it really kind of makes you wonder, like, when he left, because these are all from when, he, just so everybody knows, because they haven't really made this super clear in the media, these are from his time as vice president. Mm-hmm. So these aren't, like, current 
confidential items. And there, another wrinkle to that that you really just don't hear is at least Trump had presidential documents that he could have declassified. Yeah. And there is at least an argument there that it may be at some point he did. Biden doesn't have that power. So he has these classified documents that he didn't ever have any reason that he could have, he, he can't even make the argument, well, I declassify them. Yeah, he like, didn't have the authority to declassify them. Yeah. Um, he, it was he, the same issue the, with Hillary Clinton's stuff. Yeah. Like she was never in a position where she had the authority to declassify the documents that she had. Yeah. Um, of course, I, I think like the main part of this that, oh, he had classified documents or secret documents or whatever, however they were marked. Yeah. Um, they all do that. Well, they, I, it's not, it, they this absolute, is not a, well, and that's the <laughs> other, the other thing to this is like, so they, they kind of tried to nail Trump with this whole, oh, well, he took documents he shouldn't have and blah, blah, blah. Well, come to find out. And I think as time goes on, this may come <clears> out more and more. A lot of these people keep these documents and just it. This is just common practice. Yeah. Um. And I've, I've something else I've never really understood about this is so at least my understanding was like presidents still once even once they leave office and vice presidents too all of these people still get briefings and whatnot after mm -hmm. they leave office. So what's really the difference between them receiving these briefings when they leave office and having some of these documents still in their possession? I, I doubt that there really is any. I mean, I mean they still uh, have their clearances and stuff. Yeah, uh, um, maybe not quite the level that they did when they were in when office, they were in office. But, but yeah. I mean, that's I mean that to me at least that's all. I mean that's always been common practice. So I just never understood that end of this. Mm -hmm. But but it makes it for me it uh, makes me wonder what's in those documents that Biden had because something tells me it may be something to deal with Ukraine or you know that it, type of thing. Yeah, it might be. It's probably because, nothing. Uh, I mean, it may so be nothing. This, this is the the discussion that I want to have about this, a very open-ended, like, why why are we finding out about this now? Because this is also a story that could have been easily quashed. Oh, yeah. Well, and has been for a while, right? Like, I mean, it just came to light recently, like yeah. within the past week or whatever. Um, but, they knew like a week before, at, at least, I guess, yeah. like a week before the uh, midterm the elections. The midterms, that's what I'm so saying. So they obviously held it that long. Um, it's just pretty amazing that they could do that. It, I well, mean, it's, considering it's, how normally the stuff just leaks out. It doesn't normally just leak out. It did with Trump. Yeah. Constantly. Yeah. Um, all these leaks are controlled, though. Yeah. I, I don't think that there was any kind of accident in this information getting out there. No, uh, no, no. Which is which is why the it, it prompts the question of why now? What's the what's the purpose yeah. of this? Um, you know, the, the most obvious answer is that they're, I guess the establishment is terrified that Joe Biden is going to run for office again and in 2024. And yeah. they want to make sure that that doesn't happen. So they want to embarrass him into leaving office Just or not running again away at least. gracefully. Um, it could easily be like, especially in light of the Trump thing, who's another person that they don't want running for president, that yeah. they could just um, use this to uh, preclude either one of them for running for president again in 2024. Yeah. Uh, and it's a win-win. We keep Trump out. We keep Biden out. We get to... And the like, world will be a better place. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in many ways, uh, that's not yeah. far from the truth. But, um, but God, unfortunately, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The enemy I know or the enemy I don't. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't really think that that's it, though. Yeah. Just because from what I've seen, and I, I don't follow mainstream media real closely, but from what I've seen, um, the mainstream media isn't, it, it, they're defending they're still Biden. running. They're still running cover. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and, and I think is, if the purpose if was were, to get him out, they wouldn't run cover. Yeah, they'd go full on. Yeah, they'd be more antagonistic to him about this. Absolutely. Um. So then, the, then why? Yeah. Uh, I mean, is it? It could be that there's something in the documents that they, you know, they'd rather you be focused on the fact that documents were there instead of what the content what, is. Yeah. Um. It could be that. Um, where they were kept or who might have had access to them yeah. is the real story that we won't hear. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, there's a lot of room for speculation. It does feel like there's something else at play here, though. 
Yeah, that it's a distraction for some other aspect yeah. related to it. Yeah. Because, or something else entirely. I, it could be something else entirely. It doesn't necessarily, whatever they're trying to keep us from looking at may have nothing to do with the documents. Yeah. It could be some other story entirely. Yeah. Um, it could be, I don't, I don't know. Um, do you have any more ideas? Cause I, I feel like I can use this transition to the next topic. <laughs> no. Um, I mean, the only other thing I really had to say about the deal with the documents is it's just ridiculous that we have so much cl stuff classified anyway. Well, yeah, that's a good point to make. Um, um it, it, almost everything that passes through, it's laziness. Yeah. I really think that it's laziness on the, on the part of these departments, um, that they're like anything. Well, you know, I don't feel like reading it. I'll just mark it classified. That's kind of how I feel like <laughs> right. it goes. Like, you know, we'll just mark everything classified. Yeah. That way we don't have to, you know, put any effort in. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think that there's some truth in that. Yeah. You know, sometimes you get documents released um, and that were classified and there's just like, there's nothing there's of no, any interest yeah. in, <laughs> in well, them. And there should be some kind of standard for what it takes to classify a document. Like, I mean, I, cause I, I'm not completely opposed to the government having classified documents. I mean, if it's mm -hmm. something that's going to jeopardize like, like troops on the ground somewhere mm -hmm. or, or agents in the field, yeah. Classify that stuff. I'm good with that. There's a real question about whether you need those things though. Well, I would, the agents in the field well, or the troops on the ground. Oh, I there. absolutely agree with that. Like, I mean, in a perfect world, we wouldn't have those people out there, so we wouldn't have a need for it. Yeah. But given the current circumstances, mm -hmm. like, I don't want to see people's lives be in jeopardy. Yeah. Um, even though I'm against them being in those positions in the first place. Yeah. Well, um, but you know how that's used too, though. I mean, that's that's something that was used against uh, Snowden. Manning and Snowden and yeah. yeah. Um, and Assange yeah. is that the their information that they leaked out there um, put people at risk. But that was bullshit. <laughs> yeah, it was all lies. <laughs> yeah, that like there's never been any evidence that that was actually the case. But yeah. it's a way of turning. It, yeah, it's a way of turning the public against those people. Yeah, well, and so yeah, I I and I agree with that that it's definitely something a weapon that could be used in the wrong way as far mm -hmm. as just public opinion and whatnot. But but I. I do. I do have sympathy for the government having some secrets, but yeah. the, the problem is, is they're way over the top with it right now. Mm -hmm. And just like you say, I think a lot of it is laziness. Just like you know, it's way easier to just classify it, and then the stuff that really does need to be hid is buried in all of this classified stuff anyway. So even if you do get any access, it's all buried there in tons of garbage anyway. Yeah, um, there's. Uh, there's no reason for a government of, by, and for the people to have so many secrets. Yeah, yeah. Um, to operate in secret. In fact, uh, Major Garland Briggs said something like, um, uh, a, uh, any government, or I think he says any institution that operates in, in secrecy inevitably lends itself to corruption. Yeah, yeah. Operates against the people. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what ends up happening. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we've also seen like in some of the, um, uh, was it in the Russia gate stuff? I can't remember. Um, but we saw some of the FBI stuff that was classified that when it was finally released just showed that the FBI was looked foolish. That's yeah. why it was classified. <laughs> All right. Yeah. They didn't want to <clears throat> embarrass themselves by having that out there. Yeah. So, um, so that's, <laughs> that's another way they use this tool. Yeah. Um, I agree. I'm sure that there's some standards for what is, what qualifies something for these kind of classifications, but I don't think it's used. Yeah. I was going to say, I bet I, I almost guarantee you if there is a standard, it's rarely <laughs> ever. And I mean, who's going to enforce it anyway? You classified this and you shouldn't have. Okay. Like who's going to make that determination? Yeah. So. Um, I said that I could use this to transition to the next topic, but I forgot what my transition was going to be. So. <laughs> well, what's the next topic? The next topic is Ukraine. Oh, okay. Um, how do secret documents lead to Ukraine? Hmm. Yeah. I I'm sure that we could come up with some good answers for that, but that's, that's not really the point. Yeah. Um, so this is the, this is a question that has been bothering me, um, for a little while. And if you accept our uh, evaluation or analysis of this, which is really kind of an amalgamation of uh, analyses by um, a bunch of other people, uh, Daniel Davis, uh, Douglas McGregor, um, 
uh, Moon of Alabama, uh, and some other Ron Paul, Ron Paul, and some other um, people that I would consider to be fair authorities uh, that can be trusted yeah. on this stuff, including some, um, you know, I, you know, I have read some information from like blogs and so forth of Ukrainians on the ground, uh, mm -hmm. both in the Russian areas and the Ukrainian areas. Um, information that's leaked out from soldiers in Ukraine, um, statements made by Ursula von der Leyen that were accidents, um, who's yeah. of course the leader of the EU. Yeah. Uh, and we haven't came to this in ignorance is kind yeah. of the point. Yeah. Uh, so if you, if you accept our analysis that Ukraine will lose this, yeah. um, barring something drastic changing. Yeah. Um, that, that Russia will overcome Ukraine. And I would say within the next year. Yeah. Like before the end of 2023, I suspect that that unless something drastic changes, this will be over and Ukraine will have lost. Yeah. OK. The thing that bothers me about this is how does the West react to that? Yeah. Um, what's their escape route? Because my concern is that that this inevitable loss by Ukraine only leads to an escalation by NATO in the U.S. Well, it, that they can't accept a loss by it, Ukraine. It definitely feels like for the U.S., like it's a hill to die on. Mm -hmm. Like for whatever reason, um, I mean that just that, that's because we were talking about this the other night, and I just I don't see how this unwinds in a good way. Like because I mean, we if if Russia is going to end up eventually winning. I mean, just like you're saying, how do we accept that? Like, how does the U.S. accept that? Except um, that they were wrong, that all yeah. these leaders were wrong about where this was going and Ukraine's chances and how much money and material that we pumped into this place. Yeah. Well, and something you were mentioning the other night, I mean, take Korea for an example. Mm -hmm. we're, we're still in a, what's it called, an armistice or whatever, like a, basically a ceasefire. Yeah. Like, I mean, the, yeah, the war is not over. technically not over. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that what we're looking at here for Ukraine? A situation um, where like Russia ends up just taking these places mm -hmm. and like we just kind of leave it at that, like with the war still kind of going on, but not really like. Yeah, that wouldn't be a bad end. That's that's the best case scenario I see. <laughs> well, OK, so that's not the best case scenario I see. Well, I, I, I will um, I will offer some some opportunity, like my hopeful opportunities okay. uh, on this um, at the end. But my concern is, of course, that this, that it'll be escalated by the West um, yeah. because they can't uh, because they can't go to their people after all of this and say, we spent so much of your money to help Ukraine win. And we told you the whole time that they would win and that they were winning. Yeah. Yeah. And that turned, it turns out that's not correct. I mean, they won't say it turns out we were lying to you the whole time, but you no, know, that that'll be, it seems like they're going to have to have some kind of this factor changed. And that's mm -hmm. why we're, this is X, Y, Z has happened. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of blackpilled on this. Um, I'm afraid that there is no way out, uh, except through escalation and an actual confrontation between Russia and the West. Yeah. Um, and of course I don't think that that ends there either because I, I mean, the U S can't accept that they aren't the unipolar power anymore. This yeah. is part of the problem is that the elites in the U S they no longer have that unipolar authority but they're still trying to wield it. Yeah. And the truth is that Russia and China and some other nations as well, I would say, I mean, India is getting there also. Um, and if there are some countries in Europe that if they wanted to assert themselves, um, France, Germany, yeah. uh, for example, that they could be also, you know, multipolar powers. Yeah. Um, in the world, but Russia and China have said outright, we are no longer in a unipolar world. We're in a multipolar world Yeah, and we're Poles too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not meaning Polish, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Power centers, power centers. Yeah. And, uh, and while the, the story here in the U S is that the world is united behind Ukraine. That's not true. Yeah. Um, the, the Western world, is you know, like meaning the northern hemisphere the, <laughs> in yeah. Western world, 
um, maybe united behind Ukraine. Um, but that's only roughly a quarter of the world, a quarter of the nations in the world. Yeah. Um, the other 75% either don't care at all or are actually behind Russia and China. Yeah. And because of the way that the U.S. has wielded, wielded particularly its economic power over the years, we haven't made a lot of friends. Yeah. And there's a lot of countries out there that I think would like to join the, um, the world economy but are afraid to join the world economy under the U.S. terms, especially recognizing from things that have happened to other nations like Iran um, that if they don't toe the line, if they don't do what the U.S. wants, that they could be cut out and isolated and, and, you know, choked out. Yeah. Um, But if they if they unite behind China and Russia, China particularly, um, that they that there's less chance of this. Yeah. That you know, China doesn't seem to be as concerned about the way you're running your country <laughs> as the U.S. is. Yeah, right. and and these are the you know this other seventy five percent of the world, the global South, as they like to call it. Yeah. Um, they you know there's enough of them that they could have a separate economic system from the U.S. controlled New World Order um, Northwest. Yeah. Um, economic system and have plenty of trade to go around for everybody to get what they want yeah. and not have to worry about Demon. towing the line for the United States. Yeah. And um, the U S doesn't seem to have much of an appetite for that. At least yeah, the that's elite. Certainly true. Yeah. The people I mean, in look, control. look at Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is now dealing very uh, overtly with the Russians. Yeah. Because probably because they're tired of listening to us. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they they always wielded more uh, um more power in that dynamic between Saudi and the US than a lot of places have yeah. that have been kind of trapped into this kind of thing because they had the resource that was most wanted. Yeah. Um and they never really gave up control of it like some other places did. Yeah. Um I'm thinking particularly of South America, like major exports in South America that were highly desired goods that the US helped them develop. They more or less signed away their um, ownership of those things to yeah. the U.S. or to U.S. companies or to the uh, um, International Monetary Fund or to the World Bank or whoever. Something, yeah. yeah. Um, read the Economic Hitman. Yeah. Um, this is really fascinating. But one of the places that they talk about is kind of an anomaly with Saudi Arabia because they, you know, tried to do the same thing with Saudi Arabia and the development of their oil resources. But they never really gave up their ownership of the resources. Yeah. And because it was such an important resource that they wielded more authority, more power in that relationship than most other nations that had been subjected to the same kind of economic Crushers. hitman stuff. Yeah. 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 Um, so anyway, that I kind of went down a rabbit hole a little bit there. Uh, but the point is that because of the way the U.S. has wielded its economic power over the last many decades, um, I can understand why a significant portion of the world is looking for any other option. Yeah. Um, and, and they have it. Yeah. Like there are other options. And, and I think that we've probably pushed a lot of nations away from us and we've pushed Russia and China closer together, Yeah, which was always something that we tried to avoid in the past. There doesn't, yeah, it just seems kind of inevitable though. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, if we keep pushing on both of them. Yeah, if you're antagonistic towards both of these nations, eventually they're going to. They're going to band together. Yeah. Like. Um, So my, my hopes, like the way that I would like to see this end at this point, assuming that Ukraine loses the war. Yeah. I do see some outs for the U.S. to not admit defeat. Okay. Um, One is to just say um, that, well, um, it's Ukraine's fault. We gave them everything that they asked for. We gave them all these weapons, all this money, like everything that they could have wanted to win the war. And the Ukrainian army and its leadership was just not competent enough to do it. Yeah, that one seems a little tough, though, because at least in the media, they're, they all all you hear right now is special interest stories about just how great the Ukrainians are yeah. and how how hard their military is fighting. Now, mm-hmm. granted, we're in that propaganda phase where they need that to be the story for us to keep to justify us keep giving them money. Yeah. So 
maybe there's a scenario where the media backs off of some of that when it when the writing gets on the wall good. Yeah. Well, I think that that's the least likely thing to happen. Actually. Well, me too. <laughs> just just given the propaganda that we're in the middle of now. Mm-hmm. Um, a better escape route, I think, uh, something that would be more palatable, is to actually call it a win. Yeah. And say, hey, Russia was trying to take over all of Europe. Yeah. Ukraine was just <laughs> the first stopped step. Them at, and we stopped them in Ukraine. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, but if we, if they, if, you, if Russia... I mean, half of Ukraine <laughs> is now part of Russia, but... <laughs> yeah. Well, and I do think that there's there's hope for maybe that type of scenario, or even the scenario where part of Ukraine just becomes independent. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's really, really what the best scenario we can hope for is that in the end, a, a, a good portion or those a- contested areas just become independent, mm-hmm. not part of Russia or not part of Ukraine. Yeah. But that doesn't solve the problem. You still have to have the story of why this isn't a defeat. Yeah. Um, like the, the it could important be a, part it could is be a story for democracy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't think that that's enough of a sell. You don't think so? Uh, no, I don't. Yeah. Um, I think that I think that the best scenario for the the Western leaders is to call it a win. Yeah. And to call it a win by saying that you know we stopped the Russian hordes in Ukraine and they weren't able to move on yeah. to other territories like they wanted. Yeah. Um. You know we we were able to put an end to the to the Russian takeover of Europe in the first country they invaded. Yeah. Um, now there's a question there, whether we've got leadership in this country that's clever enough to play that card. Yeah. I I mean, you are talking about Biden and and you have to think back. I don't know. This just makes me think back of the withdrawal from Afghanistan Mm -hmm. where like there was just this assumption that it would take months or years for the, the government and power to fall. And then it like happened in days. Yeah. Like, but, but, and what the reason I bring that up is because the people who are making these decisions and doing this stuff right now are the same people that made those decisions in Afghanistan that was so confident that we confident that we would be able to get out in plenty of time before the Taliban took back over. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are the same people making those decisions. Well, there's a, there's a couple of, um, of aspects of this that I think are also important to examine. Because uh, obviously I'm not a I'm not a fortune teller. Well, yeah. Um, I mean, sw- we're, we're trying to we're trying to read the tea leaves. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. swinging wild here. Yeah. Um, the uh, okay, so it is very reasonable, I think, for Russia because one of the things that we don't talk about anymore are the um, biochemical labs that were in mm. Ukraine. Yeah. Um, and then of course the the weapons transfers that were already happening, and this is that's also an important. In fact, let me go down that road a little bit for a second. Um, I, I, so I am cynical enough to believe that that's really what this is all about on the U S side is just the privatization of public funds. Yeah. Um, using this as an excuse to transfer all this money from us, the taxpayers yeah. into the pockets of the, you know, the military well, contract. Just bear in mind, we just gave up the big cash cow, Afghanistan. Yeah. So, well, it, but it wasn't the big cash cow yeah. because it's it's major power conflict that really is the big cash cow. Well, yeah, that's when yeah, you can but, start buying carriers and but stuff you like still, that. But you still have to remember that we were pouring. I saw some numbers a while back. I mean, what we're pouring into Ukraine right now mm-hmm. is on the same levels as what we were pouring into Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah, it was like a hundred billion a year or something. Yeah, like that. I mean, we're on the same mm-hmm. level as far as that. And you've got to remember, these military companies lost all of that after mm-hmm. Afghanistan. Yeah. So this is this really is just another way to to privatize those funds into mm-hmm. back into these companies. Yeah. So the question you have to ask then is what's next? What becomes the next project that they can use to do this? Because, because it because seems pretty Ukraine obvious ends, to me that this isn't going to end as far as privatizing fu- public funds. Oh, yeah, funds. that part. No, yeah, yeah. No, that's not going to end. Mm-hmm. So where do we go from here? Yeah. What's the next conflict region that, that makes this worthwhile? Now, my... My real concern in this yeah. is that this whole thing was um, was planned to weaken Russia so that we can focus on a war in China. Yeah. 
because that's where a lot of the hawks are really kind of pointing. Well, I was going to say a lot of a lot of the coverage seems to like if if you believe in like foreshadowing in the media, mm -hmm. like Taiwan would be yeah, would be your what, next flashpoint. Yeah, that's that's what the the foreshadowing shows. Mm -hmm. Now there there have been it seems like there have been at least public efforts uh, by the administration to have high level talks with high level Chinese officials. Yeah. Um, recently to try and keep things under control. Now, is that really because you want a long-term, um, I don't know, peace isn't quite the right word, but, or detente at least yeah. with China, or is it because you just don't want them to get involved with what's going on in Ukraine? Yeah. Cause that would be bad. Oh, yeah. And that would certainly force our hand. Yeah. And, and of course, I mean, we're already there. Yeah. Truthfully. I mean, we are co-belligerents. The United States is co-belligerents in this war. NATO are co-belligerents in this war. Yeah. Um, so I think Russia would be perfectly justified striking NATO targets. NATO, Russia doesn't want NATO involved either. Yeah. That's a lot. That's biting off more than they can chew. Yeah. Although I think that that's a no one wins scenario, honestly. Yeah. I, I don't think that anybody wins that war. Yeah. Um, it's just destruction all around. Yeah. Well, so, and I mean, really, that's what's going on in Ukraine right now anyway. Yeah. At least where But at it least it's localized there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you yeah. know, in a country that nobody cares about, yeah, at least not, not actually. It's not like all of Europe's on fire. Right. Yeah. It's just the Ukrainians. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which is, I, I, Back I, to the I don't, I don't want to, to sound, I, I feel like I should just take at least a moment that I don't want to sound callous. I like, I do have sympathy for the Ukrainians. Like I yeah. know I was kind of cavalier just then, mm -hmm. but uh, it, I really do feel for those people. Yeah, for the for the citizens. The citizens, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Um, I'm not so much concerned about their leadership at this point. They've no, no, no. The leadership trip can go to hell. Like, but the, <laughs> but the 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 actual citizens of the country are the people who's truly suffering. Mm -hmm. So yes. Um, so then back to the uh, the legitimate concerns of Russia for you know weapons in this neighboring country. Yeah. Uh, NATO weapons in this neighboring country or the biochemical possibilities. Mm -hmm. um, that were there. Now, if you follow that on, then you're like, well, then aren't they justified invading Poland where we've got these missile systems that are defensive, but can literally be changed overnight, yeah. uh, from defensive uh, missile platforms to, um, you know, yeah. Offensive platforms that can carry a uh, nuclear payload. Yeah. Um, right on their border again. Yeah. And, uh, so I don't know. The question becomes, where does this end? Yeah, I mean, and, it, and you just hope that that people actually do have sense enough to say, all right, what we need to do is just like negotiate an end as soon as possible. Yeah, and you know, Ukraine's just going to have to give up some stuff. Yeah. And the truth is that they should give it up anyway because the people that they're like the areas that they're fighting over. Don't, don't want, want to be, be part of Ukraine. <laughs> yeah. And that's something that's a big point. I know we've talked about on this podcast a lot, but it's not something you hear in the mainstream media and it's mm -hmm. important. Yeah. Like those people want to be part of Russia, at least in a lot of those areas they do. Yeah. Um, and so if you truly believe in democracy, like we always hear about, like that's the right path. Mm -hmm. Self-determination. That's something that we're certainly on board with. Right? One of our principles is self-government. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so you shouldn't be subject to a government that you don't want. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know. Especially in people, the, another one that the mainstream media has just completely forgot about is the Ukrainian government is notoriously corrupt. Yeah. Like, more so than our government. <laughs> At least openly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that yeah. may be true. I, actually, I was listening to uh, Dave Smith today, and he was talking about... Um, that he was talking with somebody and uh, that Dave was maintaining that the United States was the most corrupt country in the world. Yeah. And the person was countering like, Oh, but in Russia you can just like pay off the police officers and, and, you know, bribe people for this and that. And you have to put money in hands of everybody to get anything done and so yeah. on and so forth. And he's like, yeah, but that's, that's just like the first stages of corruption. That's like, low level introductory corruption. Yeah. Like the corruption that we have in the United States is far more sophisticated than that. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, my my just my initial thought is well, at least you can pay those people and get stuff done. Yeah, it might be preferable <laughs> like to have right? it out in the open like that instead yeah. of uh like, like here like um so I hadn't gotten to ch to check this, but uh 
one of the guys in my office was telling me today that, um, that they'd read a report that Hunter Biden was renting a property from uh, Joe um, <laughs> that was um, estimated to be worth $7,000 a month on the rental market, and he was paying him forty nine. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's a payoff of something. Yeah, yeah. Something's going on there. You right? know? Or yeah. you have, uh, you know, Obama getting paid $3.5 million or whatever it was to give that speech on climate change after he left office. Yeah. Um, like, nobody gets those kinds of, of speaking fees, like even a former yeah. president. Yeah. Um, well, 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 especially a former president. But that's yeah. what it is. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a payoff. Yeah. Um, and the Clintons are notorious for the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, and the Bushes and the, like, yeah, I mean, all, they're all know. the, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The Bushes are no better. They're the, they're, it's all the same. Yeah. So the point being that we're, we may be the most corrupt nation in the world. We just do it in a much more um, sophisticated way. Yeah. I, I'd accept that. Yeah. I, I liked the argument. I had to, yeah. I had to think about that one more, but yeah. um, I was like, hmm. That actually makes a whole there's, lot of sense. There's something like, to that. We, yeah. we have uh, found ways, like all the loopholes, yeah. so that it's technically legal. Yeah. I mean, like well, bribery I mean, is openly illegal, right? We definitely <laughs> live in a society where if you want to get anything done, you need a lawyer. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's... that's oh, that's terrifying. It, but it's the truth. <laughs> I mean, you think about it, like, I mean, if... if you need something done, you better go. I mean, I tell people all the time, you better go talk to a lawyer. I feel like I say that more than I should have to. Yeah. Um, well, I'm sure that you do. I mean, I do. I know I do. <laughs> like, but but it's the truth because the the and the the truth of the matter is is you need one to unwind the stuff because mm -hmm. the way the system's set up, you just can't do it on your own. Yeah. So. That's why you have a uh, four thousand page omnibus bills. Yeah. It's all lawyer speak. Yeah. Um. You know the. Well, I mean, look at what's... The more obscure it is, the more effective. Look at what's in Congress. It's all lawyers mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah. For the most part. I mean, there's some exceptions to that. Mm -hmm. But, like, you start looking, lawyer, lawyer, lawyer. <laughs> yeah, some of my favorites are not lawyers. Well, yeah. Uh, they're Rand the good Paul, ones. He's, yeah. a, he's a doctor. My you doctor. got Thomas Massey. Yeah. He's an engineer. Huh. Yeah. I'm not saying, like I say, I'm just, I'm just saying overall. Yeah, no, you're 100% correct. So... Um... I mean, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about that. I just, I just have concerns about where this is going and whether the uh, U.S. will take an escape route yeah. on this issue, or if they'll just, if they have painted themselves into a corner and now have to press. Well, there's always def there's always the option that that Russia ends up winning and the media and the government just all focus their attention on something else. Yeah, exactly. Just move on to something Just else. Just move on. Yeah. Um, and that's that's a, that's a definitely an option or out mm -hmm. there, um, especially if things cook up in Taiwan. Yeah, let's hope that, that that's even worse. Well, that's worse. No, it is worse, but I, th none Actually, of these... is it worse? I don't know. It's... It's got to be up there. I definitely. Mean, it's, it's definitely got to be up there. <laughs> uh, I don't know. That's a smaller place. Yeah, but it's, I mean, it's just as bad as having a, a war on Russia's border. Well, and the thing is, is can Taiwan defend against China without, yeah, actually, without us? I mean, they, well, they already have everything they need from us. Yeah. Uh, I, the, the, I mean, yeah, but do they, on, do they know how to okay. use it? I mean, that, yeah. cause that comes well, up. This has been going on for a while though. I yeah. mean, we've been giving them weapons for a long time. Yeah. Um, the, the military analysts, um, that I have read about this topic, yeah. um, say that Taiwan has everything it needs to defend its, its Territory. shores yeah. from China, yeah. that it would be so costly for China to try and invade Taiwan that it's not worth it. Yeah. Um, because it's an island. You got, uh, yeah. You got a, a small strait that you can um that they have to move men and material across. Yeah. They're no other way to do it. Yeah, I mean they're and they're essentially like indefensible during that time, yeah. like in the transport. And then you gotta create a beachhead on this tiny island. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's being I mean, defended heavily. I with yeah. uh with modern American weapons. Yeah. It would be It'd be tough. Yeah, it would be really costly. Yeah. Um, for China to do it, like to the point where China won't. Yeah. Uh, China has a long, long-term view of this. 
Yeah. The, the goal is to reunite all of the stuff, but they don't mind waiting. Yeah, decades. Well, that, that is the thing about China is they're they're always playing the long game. Yeah, like so. There, there's that to consider. Mm-hmm. So, and they're not an expansionary power. Yeah, I, I mean, I, yeah, but they seem hell bent on Taiwan. <laughs> well, but that's because the I mean, it's been historically part of their yeah territory. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I had somebody saying to me, well, you know, they're, they're spending a lot of money developing economically in Africa and so forth. So maybe they are expansionary power. And I said, well, I mean, these things are true, but I think that this is really, this is an economic play for them. Yeah. Like the Africa stuff, the development in Africa and uh, across, um, you know, across, uh, Southwest Asia and, and through the Middle East and so forth. That's, that's just about that's just about economics and trade for them. Yeah. Um, securing of natural resources. Well, yeah. Cause I mean, that's kind of what I see it. my just opinion of it would be, yeah, they're just trying to, there's, there's resources there that, mm-hmm. that they want to have access to. Exactly. So you invest in those areas to mm-hmm. try to gain access to those resources. Yeah. And if you're the U S you do the same thing, except, except you, you do it with uh, you guns. Them, well, you do it with guns and you make them pay you for it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Like that's the that's the economic hitman thing, right? Where yeah, you, know, you just put them in debt to you. Yes. So and I, I've never been worried about China. Like my thoughts on China is that they China's got their own problems. Yeah. Um they've got some I mean, they, it's a strong enough central authority that they can kind of stave off some of this stuff for a while, but not forever. Uh they do have economic problems. Um they have social problems as they as they have developed their economy. They've had to uh, liberalize it to some degree. Yeah. They've had to make it easier. They've had they've had to provide more economic freedom in order to generate the wealth that they need. Yeah. And but with that economic freedom, like all of this stuff works hand in hand. So they've managed to um, to limit political freedom and social freedom to a great degree while uh, providing more economic freedom. But like the one will the two always, go hand in hand. Yeah, they'll all yeah. they'll all follow each other, and eventually they're going to run into another um, social revolution there. Yeah. And I, I, I'm just not concerned about it. Yeah, and and once that hits, they've got bigger problems than us. Yeah, they'll have problems at home. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, they'll ha- they'll have to fight their own revolution, their own civil war, whatever. Yeah, um, it's going to be nasty, probably. Which or it can, could go really quickly. I mean, it could go just like uh, the fall of communism in the Soviet Union. Yeah, yeah, just overnight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's hard to say, but it Im- immediately makes them less of a threat unless we continue to treat them badly, like we did the former Soviet. Yeah, right. Republics. <laughs> like there was every opportunity to put an end to all that hostility after the fall of the Soviet Union. Yeah, and we just didn't. Yeah, and then uh, you know to cap it off. Um, uh, Angela Merkel said recently that the whole uh, Minsk II agreements thing was a was a farce. Yeah. That it was just to get to buy time for Ukraine to um, strengthen its economy and its military to fight the war against Russia. Yeah. That they never had any intention of enforcing those agreements that that between um, Ukraine or, or for Ukraine that Russia was so adamant about to protect the ethnic Russians and the eastern part of Ukraine. Yeah. Um, that uh, that the Europeans helped negotiate. That they never had any intention of enforcing that. That it was just a it was just a ploy to buy time for Ukraine to build up for their fight against Russia. And she she said this. Yeah. And like, so of course Russia immediately said, "Well, I mean, this is why we can't trust <laughs> NATO and the Western countries is that they make agreements with us without having any intent of honoring them." Yeah. Yeah. And who's the bad guy here? Yeah. Everybody. 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 The yeah. There, there's no good guys. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so. uh, all right. Well, um, we managed to uh, pull an hour out of that swinging wild. <laughs> swinging wild. <laughs> <laughs> but my my notes are six words. <laughs> yeah, six words. Yeah. I wrote down a couple of topics. Yeah. And I'm gonna go from there. Yeah. Well, I, I thought that it would. I thought that it would be interesting to just kind of explore the questions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean the, the ATF stuff that that was pretty square, like what we wanted to talk about there, but in terms of, you know, why the Biden document stuff is coming up now, like what's the play, what's the, what's the goal. Um, and then of course, like where, 
the where do things go in Ukraine after Ukraine loses? Like what happens with all of these powers that are yeah. that are in conflict here? Um, I don't know if we answered any of that, but I, I well, hope that we provided no, food for thought. There's no clear answer, but but at least we were able to kind of get get an idea and try to look ahead to what, mm -hmm. because I mean, the truth is, is none of these are great as far as the solutions, <laughs> like unwinding <laughs> what we, we're in such a mess here. You just have to think like, how do you unwind this? You know, mm -hmm. I just don't see a, a good, good solution here. Yeah. I don't either. Hopefully our betters can figure it out. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> our, our elite. Yes. Can know exactly what we need. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's, that's a real a, happy place to end. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so if you have any ideas on this stuff, you can email me at michael at thelibertymike.com. Yeah. Uh, you can also comment on Facebook or YouTube uh, or Podbean, actually. And yeah. you know what? Um, you can like and subscribe in all those places, I think. Yeah. I guess you can't subscribe on Facebook. Uh, but you iTunes, YouTube, page. Podbean, all those places, yeah, you, can, um, you can follow us. Uh, yeah. Um, you can... Leave comments here, there, and most everywhere. Absolutely. And uh, like and share and uh, all those other things that help us, uh, help us get in front of more ears. Ears and eyes. Yeah. Mostly ears. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is an audio podcast. Yeah. Fair enough. Someday we will have cameras, but not today. Thank God. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, we plan to be back next week. Let's see. What is next week? Um, Next week is, I don't know. There's nothing special about next week, though. Nothing I can think of. Okay, good. All right. So we'll be back next week. Yep. Um, plan to, anyway. Yep. As long as we're all still here. <laughs> yeah, all right. And, uh, yeah. Um, and when we're back, we'll finally get this right. So in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later.